I just want to do the introduction so you can know why you want to be audacious in God. Why you want to be audacious. And um, to put you in the context, I'm going to read the, I'm, I'm not going to read the entire passage because it's a long passage. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm simply going to give you that passage as a reference. It's going to be Numbers chapter uh, 13 verses 17 through 33. But I really want to focus on that part of the verse. I'll just read you one line out of that chapter where it says, Then Caleb quieted the people before the Lord and said, Let us go at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Let us go at once and take possession. Caleb, say, let's take possession of our Canaan. Moses had sent spies into the promised land, which was Canaan. And when everyone came back, nine, ten out of the twelve spies gave a bad report. But there were two guys, Caleb and Joshua, even though they saw much opposition in the land, they said that, uh, uh, let us go and overtake them and take possession of what God has given us. Because we are well able to overcome them. Now, it, during the rest of the month, you're going to see what Joshua said that he was able to overcome. We're talking about fortified cities. We're talking about people who are fierce and cruel. We're talking about giants who were a hybrid generation of demon, fallen angel, and human beings. And they were of statures that the Bible says each one of them was the height of a palm tree. See, if, if you go outside and you look at the height of a palm tree, about 30 feet high, then you will understand the height of those people. And for some reason, Caleb and Joshua had the audacity to say, even though they are a breed of half fallen angel and half half human beings, even though they, those people or those demons or those giants, they were 30 to 40 feet high, we're going to have the audacity to believe that we are well able, we are not just able, we are well able to overcome them. It's called audacity. Somebody say, or somebody say audacity. There are certain levels to get in God. There are certain blessings to get in God. There are certain dimensions to get in God. God, there is a certain level of anointing in order for you to enjoy in God. You got to have the audacity to believe in God's promises instead of the circumstances. To believe in God's promises in spite of what the outward situation looks like. So what I'm going to do is simply introduce the subject today. And then next week and the week after, we're going to continue to explore it. But I want to give you the first reason why you have to have audacity in Christian life. Somebody say audacity. I want to give you the first reason why you need to have audacity. And the first reason why you need to have audacity is because you need to understand that each and every one of us has a Canaan to conquer. Somebody say Canaan. I, I, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Somebody shout Canaan. You can do better. Somebody shout Canaan. Somebody shout Canaan. I want you to understand that every believer has got a Canaan to conquer. Everybody, every believer has got a Canaan to enter. Every believer has got a Canaan to take possession of. I want you to understand the little, high, the little girl who's going to high school right now has a Canaan. The little boy who's in junior high has a Canaan. The baby that was born a few seconds ago has a Canaan. And the old man who's about to give his breath, last breath before the day is over, has a Canaan. Everybody's got a Canaan. The little boy, the little girl. Girl, the baby, the young man, the saved person, the unsaved person, everybody has got a Canaan in life to conquer. Somebody say Canaan. Now, what is, what is Canaan exactly? When we talk about Canaan, what is Canaan exactly? Canaan was the land to which God had called Abraham when he was still in his father's house in Babylon or Mesopotamia. 
that Mesopotamia is another name for Babylon. So while he was still in Babylon, God had called him out of his father's house. And he said, leave your father's house and follow me and I will take you to the land that I will show you. And the land where the Lord took Abraham was Canaan. Now when he got to Canaan, he gave birth to a child called Isaac, and Isaac gave birth to Jacob, and Jacob, Jacob gave birth to 12 sons, and those 12 sons will eventually give birth to the 12 tribes of Israel that will constitute the nation of Israel. But before they became the nation of Israel, while he was still in Canaan, there was a famine that came into the land of Canaan. So Jacob had to take his 12 sons and go to Egypt. So when he went to Egypt, he was given a place in the northern part of Egypt called Goshen. And they lived in Goshen for a while. While they were in Goshen, they multiplied and over multiplied. Now, and they became so much and so many that they started invading the land. And there was a Pharaoh that came to power. He said, those people are a lot in our land. So if, uh, uh, you know, an enemy comes against us, uh, against us, they could join with those Israelites and beat us. So what they did is that they subjugated all of them to slavery. And those children of Israel, for 400 years, they were slaves in Israel. For 400 years, they worked. For 400 years, they prayed. For 400 years, they called upon the Lord. And after 400 years, the Lord showed up to Moses in a burning bush. One day, one cool day, one nice day, while he was taking care of the sheep of his uh, father-in-law Jethro, the Lord showed up on top of the mountain and said to Moses, Moses, take off, take off your shoes from your feet because the land where you're standing, the place where you're standing is holy ground. And the Lord went on to say, I have seen the oppression of my people, and I have heard their cries, and I have come down. I like those three terms. I have seen, and I have heard, and I have come down. Just parenthetically, I'm not preaching about that, but I just feel like to say this prophetically. There is somebody who's been in slavery and captivity for a while, and you have a Pharaoh over your life that have been oppressing you for a while, and I'm hearing this morning that the Lord said, you thought I had forgotten about you. You thought I didn't know what was going on in your life. But the Lord said, I have heard, I have seen, and I have come down. I want you to know that this series of message about Canaan is just for you. If you would trust the Lord, if you would believe the Lord, if you would apply the word, what is being spoken from the pulpit is going to become a reality in your life. If you believe what was said here, say Glory! Uh, I, I, I just, I just, uh, I just, uh, I, I, I got to stop that preaching anointing for a little bit because I want to teach. Somebody shout Canaan. Well, the Lord said, you take out the shoes, you take off your sandals, because the plan where you're standing is holy ground. And he said, I have seen, I have heard, and I have come down. And he said, I'm going to take them out of the land of slavery into a land where, he says, where milk and honey flows. I'm going to take them from point A. Now, pay attention. Watch this. Canaan is Canaan. Look at what Canaan is. The Lord says, I'm going to take them from the land of Egypt. And I'm going to bring them into a land where milk and honey flows. I'm going to take them from point A and I'm going to bring them to point B. They are at point A. Point A is their situation, but it is not their destination. Uh, uh, I want to say to somebody in this place, what you're going through is your situation, but it is not your destination. The poverty you're going through is your situation, but it is not your destination. The sickness you're going through, it is your situation, but it is not the, your destination. The depression that you're going through, it is your situation, but it is not your destination. If you understand what I said, shout glory. 
Father, he said, uh, he told them that's your situation, but that's, that's not your destination. I'm going to take you to your destination. This month, God is going to take somebody to his destination. I said, maybe you've been suffering for 40 years and for 40 days. I don't care how long you've been in that situation, but I want to tell you, it's just a situation. Touch your neighbor, say, it's just a true situation, baby. It's just a true a situation. I don't care what you're going through this week. I don't care what you're going through this month. I don't care. Maybe you spent the entire night you didn't sleep. Maybe you got to take sleeping pills to sleep. Maybe you've been going through a period of insomnia. But the Lord is telling me today, it's not your destination. It is a situation. And this shall come to pass. And this too shall pass. I said this too shall pass. It looks like it'll never pass. It looks like it'll never go away. Uh, I want you to find three people and tell them this too shall pass. This sickness too shall pass. This headache too shall pass. Where you are in Boston, find three people and give them a handshake. This that period of sickness shall pass that period of depression shall pass that period of failure shall pass that period of unemployment shall pass that period of tears and labor hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to find three other people and tell them uh, it has an expiration date. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your problem's got an expiration date. Uh, your headache. Only what God gives lasts eternally. Everything that the enemy gives has an expiration date. Your trial has an expiration date. Your trouble has an expiration date. Your headache has an expiration date. And this has... Hey! It shall... Somebody shall glory! You may be... Me, Mama Saraya. He said, then I will take you from point A, which is your situation, to point B, which is your destination. I, I got to get, I got to get, let, let me just finish with the introduction because I'm still in the introduction. I got to get to my message. Let me get to my message. So, so what does Canaan represent? Point A of Canaan represents three things. So number one, if you're going to take notes, you could write them down real quick. First of all, Canaan, uh, Canaan represents your place of destiny. Somebody say destiny. I said somebody say destiny. So first of all, Canaan is your place of destiny. Shout destiny. Come on, shout it louder. Shout destiny. Mm, so Canaan first uh, is your place of destiny. Secondly, Canaan uh, is your place. Uh, I was going to say blessing, but it's not blessing. Because you're going to understand it's not just blessing. Canaan is your place of mega blessing. <laughs> Somebody say mega. Uh, you didn't hear what I say. Maybe, maybe mega is, is too much of a big word. So maybe I need to get into the McDonald culture and customs. Say, say super sad. Uh, <laughs> have you ever been to McDonald's? And then you would get a fry. And then you look at the fry. And you realize it smells real good. And you say supersize this baby. I'm hearing the Lord is about to supersize some things in your life. Uh, God, God is not about to just give you a blessing. He's going to supersize that blessing. He's going to supersize that promotion. He's going to supersize that level. He's going to supersize that anointing. Say mega. Canaan is your place. You got to get to your Canaan. I I'm trying to motivate you to have audacity. Because uh, all of that is part of your Canaan. But you can't get to Canaan if you're not audacious like Joshua and Caleb. You got your place of destiny. You got your place of mega blessing. And third, Canaan is the place of the manifestation of the full. Somebody say full. Say somebody say full. Canaan is the place of the full manifestation of 
God's glory in your life. I know you're experiencing some glory right now, but I'm talking about the whole thing. I'm talking about the full blessing. Somebody say full. So let me talk about these things real quick and I'll get out of your way. The, 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 the number one, first of all, Canaan is the place of destiny. So the Lord called them from Egypt and he said, you're going to Canaan. In other words, they had a journey to go through. And I want you to understand that every believer has got a journey. Every person in life has got, got, got a journey. In fact, life is just a long journey. Have you ever gone to a cemetery and look at a person's life? And you will see on the tombstone, it says John Alston was born January 7th, 1957. And actually died, okay, May 1st. 2007 in reality and there is a little dash in between and that little dash represents the person's journey and it represents their life life is a journey between point a to point b and every single person in life has got a journey from the time that you were born you begun a journey and the day you're gonna be with the lord or the day that you close your eyes it's the end of that journey so you need to know to you need to know where you're supposed to be where you're supposed to get by the end of the journey are you guys with me if you're with me say glory so Canaan actually is actually a place of destiny and each and every one of us need to, re to recognize uh, our place of destiny in life. It's very, very important. We got to understand, we got to know what is that place of destiny. We begin from point A to point B. So that's why I said everyone has a Canaan. Everyone's got a destiny. Everyone's got a purpose. Now your Canaan is where God intends to take you in life. You heard what I said? What did I just say? Your Canaan is the place where God intends to take you in life. In other words, your Canaan is your purpose. Your per Canaan is your destiny. Your Canaan was the reason why God created you. God did not create. By the way, I want you to understand that nobody exists in the world, in this world, by accident. Maybe your mom tried to have an abortion. But it doesn't matter if your mom tried to be an abortion and your mom called you an accident. You were an accident for your mom, but you were not an accident for the Lord Jesus Christ because he said before you were born, all the days of your life were already written in my book. So maybe it was an accident for your mom, but you were not an accident for God. Everybody's, everybody's got a plan. Everybody's body's a purpose. For I know the plan, says the Lord, that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. You got a destiny. You got a purpose. You got a purpose. There's a reason why you were created. So quit letting Satan wasting your time. Why are you wasting your time in the wrong things? Why are you wasting your energy in the wrong things? Why are you wasting your breath in the wrong things? You got a purpose. You got a destiny. There's a reason why you were created. God has created you to leave a footprint in this world. God has created you to make an impact in this world God has created you to change my God has created you God, God listen I know you studied history in elementary school I know you studied history in high school I know that you studied history in college I know for some of you you liked it so much it was even your major but I want you to understand that God didn't create you to study history God created you to make history uh, God didn't create you. God didn't create you to study history. He created you to make history. Ah, you didn't hear what I say. Ah, I'm hearing the Lord say, just like they study the life of Martin Luther King in school, just like they study the life of Christopher Columbus in school, just like they study the life of great scientists in school, people are going to study your life.
people are going to study your life. Uh, the generations to come uh, will study about you. The generations to come uh, will talk about you. The generations to come uh, will learn lessons from you. The generations to come uh, will talk. Somebody shout glory. Yeah. I said somebody shout glory. <laughs> I want you to find three people, even if they don't like you, they're rolling their eyes at you and tell them, you're going to read about me in a book. Baby, you're going to read about me in a book. You're going to read about my life. There's a reason why I'm going through what I'm going through. There's a reason why I'm suffering what I'm suffering. There's a reason why I'm going through all the headaches that I'm going through. Somebody's going to read about my book. Somebody's going to tell my testimony. Somebody's going to learn the lessons from my life. Somebody's going to learn from what I'm... Somebody shout glory! You've got a purpose. You've got a purpose, I said. You've got a purpose. You've got a purpose. You've got a purpose. You are not an accident. You are not an accident. You are not an accident. You've got a purpose. You've got a reason why you were born. There is an impact you're supposed to make. There is a footprint that you're supposed to leave. There's a difference that you're supposed to make. You've got a purpose. And that purpose is your Canaan. Somebody say, oh, audacity. You see, you see, you see, when, when we said somebody's going to read, when you said some, you're going to read about me in a book, uh, if you notice some, some people thought you were crazy. They didn't even want to take the handshake because they thought you're out of your mind. Why? Because they couldn't have the audacity of faith uh, to understand that you will actually change history. You will actually uh, make a difference in history. You will actually make history. They, they, they didn't have the faith to believe that. Mm. You're Canaan. Sit down for a moment. You're, 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 you're Canaan. Mm. You're Canaan. Your Canaan is your purpose. Your Canaan is your purpose. Your Canaan is your purpose. Your Canaan is the reason why you were, why you were created. And I want you to understand that you haven't lived your life to the max until you have found and conquered your Canaan. Ah, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. You haven't lived your life to the maximum until you have found and conquered your Canaan. Come on, give it to the Lord. If you live your life and die, Without finding your Canaan and without conquering your Canaan, you've wasted your time and you've wasted your life. You haven't lived your life to the maximum until you have found and conquered your Canaan. Paul found his Canaan, conquered his Canaan, entered his Canaan. So at the end of his life, he was able to boldly say, I have fought the good fight. I have, I have finished. I didn't quit. I didn't give up. I didn't get lost. I didn't get discouraged. I didn't throw in the towel. Ah, I have finished the race. And I have kept ah, the faith. And because I found and conquered my Canaan, and now the crown of righteousness is reserved and is in store for me. At the end of your life, you got to be able to say, I have fought the good fight. I'm not going to get into the exegetics of that passage. But if Paul says, I have fought the good fight, it means you actually can fight a bad fight. 
Hey, he said, I fought the good fight. So it means in life there are good fights and there are bad fights. You can spend your entire life fighting, your entire life struggling, your entire life going through hardship for the wrong reasons, for the wrong motive, because you're not in the will of God, because you're not doing it. You can fight the wrong fight. So Paul said, I have found, I have fought the good fight. If I fight, if, 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 I, if, I, if I fight, fight along my purpose, along my destiny, on my way to my Canaan, it's a good fight. If I fight Jericho, it's a good fight. If I fight Ai, it's a good fight. If I fight Gibeon, it's a good fight. Because those fights are part of my promised land. It's my territory. It's my domain. It's my kingdom. It's my stuff. I didn't go to somebody else's domain. I didn't go to somebody else's territory. I didn't go to somebody else's stuff. But it's my Canaan. I have fought the good fight. And I have finished the race. And I have kept the faith. I had the audacity to believe God. When it felt as if I were crazy. And I have kept the faith. Why was Paul able to say, I have fought the good fight. And I have kept the faith. I have finished the race. Why? Because... He knew what his Canaan was, and he knew he had entered his Canaan. And it was time for him to rest now and to be with his master, with his Lord. He knew exactly what his Canaan was. When the Lord called Paul in Acts chapter 9, he told him exactly what his Canaan was. The Lord called Paul and said to Ananias, pray for that man because he's a chosen instrument. He is a chosen vessel. To bring my name to the Jews. To preach the gospel to the Jews. To the Gentiles. And to the kings of the earth. So his Canaan was clearly defined. He was aware of what his Canaan was. He knew every corridor, every road, and every street of his Canaan. He knew that he was supposed to preach to Gentiles and to Jews and to kings. So what do we see Paul do in the book of Acts? After he got saved and served in the church. And the Holy Spirit said, put aside Paul and Barnabas for the work that I have called them. And we see them starting to travel around the world. Every place that he went to, he would find himself a synagogue. And he would preach the gospel to the Jews. Because part of his Canaan was to release the gospel into the life of the Jews. So every place that he went to, he found himself a synagogue. He found himself where they were reading the Torah. And then he would preach the gospel and the Jews would get mad at him and throw him out of the synagogue then he would say I'm gonna move to the second level of my Canaan because the Lord said not only I shall preach to the Jews but I shall also preach to the Gentiles so every time they threw Paul out of the synagogue he went to the Gentiles to the pagans in the street corner and he preached the gospel of Christ and he founded the church of Corinth and he founded the church of Ephesus and he founded the church of Philippi and he found the churches in Crete and he founded the church in Colossa and it's moving in his Canaan now the last part of his Canaan was to bring the gospel to the kings of the earth so while he was preaching they arrested him and he said well I am a Roman soldier and according to the law if you arrest a Roman soldier he's got to be judged by the king himself so through my persecution I'm about to move to the next level of my ah I'm about to move to the next level of my Canaan. Some of you are going through stuff and you think that it's out of harmony, but actually God is just taking you to the next level of your Canaan when they arrested him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they arrested him, they started bringing him before kings. And he found himself before King Agrippa while he was in front of King Agrippa with the chains in his hand and the chains in his feet. He preached the gospel to Mr. Agrippa. When he was done with Mr. Agrippa, there was another king that was higher than King Agrippa. His name was Nero. And Agrippa said, that case is too much for me. I have to transfer it to the Supreme Court. 
And then Paul said, I wanted the, the opportunity to preach to the highest king. So they transferred him to Rome. And he stood in front of Nero and preached the gospel to Nero. When he was done preaching to the highest king, to every Jew and every Gentile, he said, I have fun. I have fun. I have fun. The good fight. There were about to behead him. They were about to cut his head. But he was happy. He was jumping. I did it. I did it. I did it. I didn't give up. I didn't burn the towel. I did it. I have fun. Somebody shout, Canaan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, great. Yeah. Uh, I have fought the good fight. The men entered into his kitchen. L okay, let me, let me just, let me just. <laughs> let me just move on real quick. Cause good grief, Lord. Somebody shout glory. <laughs> just take notes real quick. I got to move on real quick. I, I got just got to. Few minutes, four minutes I got left. So let me see if I can do it quick. Let me see if I could do it real quick. Secondly, secondly, Canaan is not only your place of destiny. Canaan is your place, uh, is your place of mega, uh, mega, not just blessing, mega blessing. Because the Lord said, I'm going to take you out of the land of Egypt and I'm going to take you to a land, to, to a land where to a land flowing, flowing, where milk and honey flow. Now, pay attention to this. I don't know if you've ever paid attention to this. I mean, you milk a cow and you get a gallon of milk. Are you guys with me? You milk a cow and you get a gallon of milk. But I've never seen milk flowing like a river. <laughs> you know, you find a, is that beehive, they call them? And, and, then, and then you can find honey. But, but I've never seen a honey flowing like water. But the Lord says, the place where I'm going to take you, it's not just going to be a gallon of milk. It's not just going to be a cup of honey. Where are you going to go? Things, <laughs> pay attention to this. Where are you going to go? Things that are not supposed to flow are going to flow. just get happy for myself. Hallelujah, Greg. I said things that are not supposed to flow in your life. Uh, things that you were supposed to get uh, by a little percentage. Things that you were supposed to get 10% of, 5% of, they're going to just start uh, flowing uh, in your life. Uh, things that are not supposed to flow. Oh, God. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said finances uh, that were not supposed to flow are going to start flowing. I said promotions uh, that were not supposed to flow uh, are going to flow. I said knowledge uh, that was not supposed to flow. It's gonna flow. I know you're a black man. I know you didn't graduate yet. I know they don't like you all that much. But things that were not supposed to flow in your way. Just go like that. Just look at your neighbor. That's how it's gonna be. That's how. You didn't hear it. You didn't see what I said. You didn't hear what I said. Look at my head. That's how it's gonna happen. That's how it's gonna flow in my life. Things that were not supposed to flow. Privileges that were not supposed to flow. Anointing that were not supposed to flow. They're gonna. Flowing. I've seen water flows, but I've never seen the milk flows. And I've never seen honey flows. But the Lord said the things that are not supposed to flow, they're going to flow in your life because it's a supernatural year. It's not just a natural year. It's a supernatural year. If you dare to believe me, if you're audacious to believe me, if you would trust what I... Yeah. The next time you see me in your new car, don't get mad at me. I'll The next time when you see my new job, don't be a hater. <laughs> the next time you see me with a new suit, you don't have to get. How it's gonna be, baby? 
That's how it's gonna be. That's how it's gonna be. I said, when you see me, the top of my class, when you see me making it to the dean slip. Somebody shout glory! I need to quit. I gotta quit over here. But it's gonna flow. I'm hearing the Lord say, What is not supposed to flow in your life? It's gonna flow. I declare it over your life. I proclaim it over your life. I release it over your life. Things that you used to fight for. I said, Things that you used to fight for. Things that you used to struggle for. Things that you used to have a hard time with. It's gonna stop. Your prayer life. The word of God in your life, the anointing of God in your life, connections that you need, your finances, the intelligence. Yeah, 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 yeah